Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, clients and prospects, welcome to the program today. My name is Warren Stokes. I'm the director of sales at Avidian. I'm sure I know many of you, many of you are clients, I'm sure today, uh, but if you're prospects just looking at uh, you know, potentially uh, investing in a CRM, I think you'll find this topic very useful. I used to think it was kind of a dry topic, but I get a lot of uh, attendees to these webinars and a lot of, a lot of views on the videos that I post af afterwards. Um, feel free to ask questions through the control panel in the Zoom webinar. I'll get to the, as many of those as I can today, but the topic is uh, how to structure and interpret your CRM data. So I'm gonna basically give you a fairly rapid uh, set of concepts and, and topics here today just to kind of get the conversation framed and then we'll spend most of our time actually going through it. We're going to be using Profit CRM for Outlook today. So let's get started. Uh, just a little bit of background. We've been uh, 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 developing and improving our, our product for many, many years now and the main concept is that um, even though it's all about data, we chose the Outlook platform and the Microsoft uh, Office and 365 platform, primarily be, to make it easy for people to use. If you're already a client, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But what, what I'd like to say about this topic today is that CRM would be really, really easy, except for one thing, and that's data. So I've had uh, about 15 years of sales management experience. I've, I worked at Avidian for a little over that long, helped about close to a thousand companies now grow their business with profit. And I just enjoy doing it. I enjoy helping people become successful and uh, generating more income. It's good for everybody. I hold a couple of US patents, have another one pending in the sales automation field and have uh, quite a lot of views on my YouTube channel. Check that out. Uh, and if you just go to avidian.com, you'll see uh, learning videos and webinars posted there and you'll, you'll see uh, tons of good stuff. But here's the thing. As I said, CRM would be easy except for one thing, and that's data. The uh, data is the foundation for your entire CRM program. Without data, there's no value to it. But, but data itself is just raw, raw, raw data. And what, what we're going to be showing you how to do is kind of start transforming that into useful information. Um, and from that, you'll gain knowledge about your business. I got a lot of topics on that today. And then you're going to start hopefully developing insight from all of this. And the key to getting uh, the data transformed, informa useful information, knowledge, and insight is what you really want to look for is actionable insight. And that's what we'll be talking a lot about today. You know, what can you actually do from the data? What kind of things can you do to improve your business? So here's a way to look at it is uh, just follow along with this and just, just think about it in terms of answering certain key questions. Maybe one of them is how many new contacts were created. Simple thing. How many new opportunities were created? That will definitely tell you uh, and give you an indicator of the health of your sales pipeline. Which reps generated the most or the least activity? What clients had the most or least activity? Maybe some of them are underserved and, and we can show you how you can get that data out of here. How long is your sales cycle? How long does it take to get a new client? This, all of this will help you forecast your, your new business and your sales. And one of the key concepts there in terms of understanding and interpreting the data is your conversion rates. You could call it lead or opportunity conversion rates. Uh, it's a very useful metric. How many activities does it take to close a deal? In another webinar, we talk about automation and how we can ensure that, that you uh, have good follow-up. And uh, you'll find that, that kind of answering that kind of question will help you generate more business. Simple question, how much revenue is in my sales pipeline? Things like that. So the key concepts of the topics today are what I mentioned earlier, actionable insight. What is it? Well, it's basically um, using your data in such a way as that you can take action on it. What is data taxonomy? It's the ability to classify and categorize data so that you can understand what's going on better. Um, I'd like to think of it as some, some data is must have in order to make the whole system useful. Some of it you should have if you can get it, and others are just nice to have. Um, I'll be going through in detail some best, practice for, best practices for structuring your data. But one of the key concepts is making it easy to get the data in and getting the data out in the form of reports and dashboards and so on. Uh, big, 
big challenge in data is preventing and cleaning up duplicate data. Uh, Avidian offers a duplicate um, a deduping service, if you will, a way to clean up your data and we can do it for you. Uh, we can also just advise you on a, a few methods, which I'll cover today on how to how to remove duplicates and prevent duplicates right within the profit CRM. But, you know, here's the deal. You can't manage what you can't measure. So a big part of data, capturing data, is to be, allow you to manage the, the, uh, the activities and, and the initiatives that you are undertaking with your CRM. Think of it as like there's kind of the what, which is the data, and the so what, which is the insight you gain. So these are all very useful concepts when it comes to inspecting what you expect. Some companies don't even have uh, metrics or goals or KPIs. Uh, some of you I'm sure do, but whatever it is, this allows you to really what, what I call inspect what you expect. The data structure uh, might vary from one CRM to another, but in Profit CRM, it, Profit CRM is actually a SQL database. And it's a relational database and it lets you keep track of things based upon different what we call objects when you're talking about software design. For example, an object or an entity, same thing, is one of them is a company record. Companies can be associated with contacts. We have a parent-child relationships, which I'm going to get into a little deeper today, which allows you to see relationships between companies. You can see opportunities associated with companies. And by the way, I'll be using this little uh, kind of pointer uh, system here with the circular concentric circles to kind of show you where I'm at. Contacts, a, a contact record is an object or an entity. And in profit, we happen to use the Outlook contact card, but it's really just part of the database. It does synchronize with your phones. There's mobile apps that come with it, as you probably know if you're a profit user. Uh, contacts can be asso associated with opportunities and any given contact can be associated with multiple opportunities, not true with all CRMs. And contacts can be associated with companies, of course, and contacts and profit can be associated with more than one company. Opportunities is kind of the generic term we use to define a tracking record. It's an object, but it can take many different flavors. It might be a sales opportunity or a lead. And since it's a customizable form, you can call it whatever you wish. And in fact, with our enterprise edition, you can keep track of as many uh, things like that as you want. A good examples might be customer service cases or IT projects or in, you know, construction projects or whatever your industry is, uh, you might want to, if you're not already familiar with the enterprise system, you might want to talk to us later about that. But it gives you the ability then to track not just companies, contacts, and opportunities, but other types of transactional records. But the whole point of this is not just to capture the data, but it's to understand and do something with it. It's to be able to track all of the, the interactions with clients or prospects. It's the ability to see all the emails and appointments and tasks and other activities uh, and associate files, documents, folders with, which, with each of these different types of entities. So kind of try to get your mind around that as we go through this. Getting the data into profit, there's a lot of ways to do it, but really it's pretty easy. Uh, with a little coaching or training from us, I think you'll find that, well, one thing is that if you use Outlook contacts, that's going to be automatically part of your database. A really cool thing about Profit is that when you create a new contact, it creates the company record automatically and starts associating those other contacts from the same company to that record. We do have uh, part of our patent on that. Pretty cool. Uh, you can create contacts from drag and drop uh, an Outlook function. Uh, you can uh, you can import data from an Excel file if you've never done that with Profit. It takes a little little coaching and training, but it's actually pretty easy to do. So you might have, if you're new with Profit, you might want to import your customer list from your accounting system, or you might get lists or leads or various types of um, data, and you can import them from Excel. You can also use that same utility, the import utility, to mass update records. It's, uh, it's a very useful function to just update certain fields in all of the company or you know, account records that you have, for example. We do offer website form integration. It's part of our solution to be able to capture data from forms, you know, contact us forms or sales inquiry forms from your website. So talk to us about that if you're interested in getting that set up. Um, another way to get data into profit is to integrate it with your other systems, your ERP or accounting systems. We do offer a full integration service as well. 
when I mention the word taxonomy, it's really just a, a concept for having enough data to be able to classify and categorize your data. In the case of contacts, it's going to include not just the contact data, which will be the, you know, the normal first name, last name, company, address, city, state, zip, phone number, but profit adds 20 additional fields. And I'm going to be getting pretty deep today into how to use that data so that you can sort and filter and slice and dice and get the information you need and then take certain actions on it. But, you know, think of data in general, and especially with a contact, is some information you must have. There's nothing worse than having a contact with just a first name bill and a phone number or something like that. So you want to get the full name, first and last name. Capturing email address is crucial these days, of course, and the phone number. So if you have that information, you have a pretty useful contact. But it's very important if you can to get things like the company name, obviously, if that's applicable in your business. If you're B2, uh, B2B, um, that's going to be extremely important. You should also have job title because that helps you understand you know, who, who's who in the zoo, so to speak. Um, another should have would be a mobile, especially in these days. Uh, mobile numbers are increase, increasingly important. And uh, that's something, if you can get it, you should strive to do so. A physical address is very handy for organizing the data by geography so that you can see all the contacts created in a certain state or city and that sort of thing. And you can start seeing trends with, uh, with regards to their geographical location. What I call nice to have are other things. Uh, things like the LinkedIn profile might be a good use for one of the customizable fields in profit. Um, that's always that's always fun. Um, hobbies, interests, birthdays, spouse, spouse's name, pet's name, whatever, things like that that help you gain more um, knowledge about your contacts in the database. The company record is similar to a contact record, but it includes 72 customizable fields. Uh, you can have uh, fields of obviously you want the full company name if, if you, uh, you know, if you can get it. You want a company phone number, it could be different than the individual contact phone numbers. You really should get a physical address for the same reasons I just mentioned. Uh, websites are always useful to have, so that, that's a, an important one. Industry, that might be one of your customizable fields in the company record so that you can track your accounts by industry, sort, filter, do outreach, things like that. Type of company, are they a distributor? Are they an ongoing account? Is it an opportunity account? Just so that you can have a quick at a quick glance, what type of company are they? Is it or are they in the database? Nice to have would be things like how many employees do they have that might be relevant in your business, number of locations that they serve. Um, do they have parent? Um, is there a parent company and does it have subsidiaries? We're going to get into the parent child relationship here uh, more in a moment. Uh, what Profit does, though, I'm going to dig, dig deeper into the company data structure here. And then from this slide, we're going to just switch over and start looking at it all in Profit. Profit serum. So company records are basically a way to capture information about companies. Obviously, there's 72 customizable fields, and those can be set up as either text fields, drop down lists, numeric, date, or what we now call a memo field, which is a bigger uh, text field. You can then sort, filter, and group your company data by all of those different criteria, including the 72 customizable fields in it. And it's useful to know there's no limit on the number of filters that you can set. I'll be showing you that. You can set three, four, five, six filters to really get granular with your, with your data query. Profit has um, a very unique uh, relation, uh, company relationship called parent-child relationships. Um, what it does is it allows you to see subsidiaries or locations, like as I'm pointing over here, uh, under what we call the child uh, tab. And it's also, you can also have an unlimited number of tiers to that. In other words, a child company can actually be, um, have its own child companies and be a parent to others. And uh, that comes up from time to time. So there's no limit on how many tiers of that that you can have. So let's, let's pause here on the slide deck and go right into profit. And I'm gonna start in the company, company data since that were, that's what we were just talking about. So I want to get your mind around first, you know, creating the data sets that are useful to you. So you can see that when I'm in the company manager folder that I just clicked on, there are these um, lists that we call views. They're just lists of, of, in this case, company data that is sorted and filtered 
different ways. This particular view I'm in now shows me all of the accounts that I have in Hollywood, California. In fact, you can see these columns. The city is Hollywood, the state is California and the zip code here. Now, if I were to show you how, uh, what's behind that, there's a setting here called edit this view. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to go about doing what I'm gonna show you here, but I'll just show you the, um, the view editing mode because what that allows you to do is change the settings so that you can sort and filter by different criteria. When you first open that view settings, it'll give you the view name, Hollywood accounts, how you're selecting the data, in this case by user assignment, and I only want those assigned to me. But down here where it says additional filtering, this is a very important concept here for editing or creating a view, and that is you can add criteria that are filters. Now, I wanna, maybe I'm stating the obvious, but filtering is different than sorting. Sorting changes the order in things uh, that things appear. The filtering reduces the number of records by certain criteria. In this case, there's three criteria. And notice you have the option of an AND filter or an OR filter. Uh, AND filters require that all conditions are met. So in this case, the state equals California, the city equals Hollywood, and the account is the account, yes. In other words, are they an account or not? So in this case, the answer to that is yes. So all of these are accounts in Hollywood, California. I can add additional filters simply by placing my cursor here uh, and I could start typing in things like state province or, or uh, you know, postal or zip code or whatever. And basically what this is allowing me to do is create additional filters. I'll just start typing in zip. You can see it's postal code and I can add an equals. Now here's an important part in slicing and dicing your data. It's called the comparator. You'll see that there's a little drop down list and it says equal, not equal to, greater than or equal to, or starts with or contains. I like contains a lot because it's just a little easier than trying to get an exact match. But on a postal code, you'd probably want equals. That's where I could put in 90210 or some other um, filter. Now, again, this can be all conditions must be met or any conditions. So that's just kind of a little back end on setting up these views. Another concept is just organizing your, your data in such a way that it makes sense to you. You can, once you've created a list like this, you can drag and drop columns. You can make them wider and narrower. Uh, in this case, you can see they're all flagged as accounts. I'll put uh, you know, uh, things like the address or what have you, the industry. And all of these things are just, it's up to you as a user to um, place them where you want in this list. The scroll bar takes you across all of the, all of the columns in that field. So really think of this as, it's kind of like a uh, you know, dynamic Excel, Excel spreadsheet that you're all, um, if you're in a team environment that it creates a centralized database. Now, if you make changes to this, you, you would probably want to save them. So you can either hit F12 or save changes to view. That way, when I edit, when I exit out of this view, like into another view or view equals list. We call them views because there's different ways to look at it. Um, but you can have things like maybe you want all of the accounts in a certain industry might be a, a good example. So here's all my healthcare accounts and you can see the industry are all healthcare. Uh, if I want to go back to that view that I was just in, my accounts in Hollywood, I can just navigate back to it through the drop down. So, just a few things about organizing the data in, in views that make sense to you. Now, I'm going to also show you how to add columns. It's pretty easy. You just right click while you're in the view and you say choose columns. What you'll see is the column chooser will come up, and this is how you select the columns, the data that you want in the view. On the left, you will see the um, fields that are available, like business model. And then on the right, you'll see the, all of the columns that are in that view. And now by moving them up with the arrow, it'll move them to the left in the view. So you can add columns by going right click, choose columns. And that way you're starting to get some real um, useful data here. Now, before I get into the parent-child relationships, I wanted to just show you a couple of examples of filtering, adding multiple filters to a, to a view. So here's a good example. I wanna just look at say accounts that are in Hollywood. So I've already got 
some filters set, but I'm going to add another one, in this case, industry. So this just brings up, I'm, I'm clicking on the little filter icon. It just brings up all the values in that drop down list. So now if it was a longer list, I wouldn't have to just go you know, sorting through it. I could just start typing in the value that I want in this case, manufacturing. So now I've created a view of all of my manufacturing accounts in Hollywood, California. So this is, this is a key part about, um, you know, getting useful insight from this. And from here, maybe I wanna send some kind of communication out to all of, here's the actionable insight. Now that I've got the data and it's in a list and I've filtered it by state and city and industry that they're in, I can take different actions. One of them would be to initiate a mail merge that generates a Microsoft Word mail merge for letters, you know, labels, envelopes. Some people still use that, but I could also use this to send a group email. So here's an action that you can take. Okay, here's the recipient list from that. I could still edit it. Basically just choose your salutation. This, I'm sure many of you use this function, but I'm just showing you this as an example of an action you can take from a list like this. When I say create email, Profit starts to allow you to compose the email. It's addressed to the first person on this list. Now, if you're on 365 platform, you may know that there's templates that are available uh, that you can create. And we cover that in another webinar, but um, I'll just show you how that might look. But you can also just type in the content. You can do things like uh, maybe you wanna insert your, um, you know, your uh, signature line or something like that. Uh, I'll just go ahead and do that, put a subject line in it. So what profit, what this will do, this group email function in profit, it's going to send a personalized email out to everyone on that list. Pretty awesome. But that's just an example of one of the many things you might do once you've got your data sorted and filtered correctly. I'm keeping an eye on the chat and the Q&A button here. So I haven't seen any questions yet, but feel free to, to uh, you know, enter a question if you have any. I'm also going to um, use this as an opportunity to um, show you how to create a completely new view. It's also easy to do. Now I've got a lot of different views created, but you'll notice under the view drop down, there's a, an a, a option called tools. And if you hover over it, you can simply do things like edit the current view, create a new view, manage views and do various things. I'm just gonna click create new view and I'll show you how that works. So this is creation of a new view. You give it a name, you then choose the type, I almost always leave it in table grid, forget that simple list, don't even worry about it. But you, know, you can choose by um, folder, which is an outlook function or by user assignments, which is the default. Maybe I want all those assigned to me, so I just leave that the same. Now I'm gonna add additional filtering. So I'm gonna create a view of all contacts in a certain state. And I'll just make that uh, Texas today, TX. Now, one thing you might do, a good example of an OR filter would be I'll do state province equals, but I want the Texas spelled out. So I'm gonna change that to an OR filter. So now if I just say save view, and I'll, I'll actually label it uh, companies in Texas, what we're doing is we're making some good use of the data we've captured. I wanna see all my accounts in Texas, let's just say. Um, so there they are, they're all in Texas. And because I put that OR filter, sometimes the, car, the card comes in, the contact comes in, or the record says Texas spelled out, sometimes it's just TX. So that's a useful little function of the OR filter. Uh, but maybe I wanna see all the contacts that are in uh, Houston, Texas. So this is the ability to add additional filtering to that, to that view. And there they go, you got different, you know, capitalizations of Houston, but that's kind of nice because it'll pick up any of them. And I click okay. And now I could do a save view as very, so now I could go up here, save view as, and I could say um, accounts in Texas. Okay. In fact, I would change that to accounts in Houston, uh, uh, Texas, or whatever. So this is uh, the idea of what you do with the data. Uh, this is very simple things. But while I'm here, I wanted to show you the concept of grouping. So um, let me just go back to my Hollywood accounts for a second. Uh, and that's just one of my, my lists here that I use for demos. And I want to show you the idea of grouping. So 
notice all of these columns, I can just drag one of them up to this upper area. In fact, there's a little, little note that says drag a column here to group by that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna drag the label just onto that gray area. And now I can see all of the contacts in certain industries, all of the contacts in, in education, all of the contacts in entertainment and so on. So that's a grouping function to, to take that group away. I just exit X out of it. Great, so let's talk about parent child relationships. No, it's not family counseling time. It's, um, it's the data structure. You notice that there are actually uh, fields and columns that are available that says is parent, is child. You might find that useful because you want to see company, only companies that are parents. So if I open this record up by just double clicking on it, you're going to see when I go to the child tab down below, there's two companies that are subsidiaries of that, or we call them child companies. Now, if I open up one of the child companies, you'll see it is linked to the parent company, just an easy way to navigate between the two. So you, with the record open or with it just like it is, you can also, this is very useful, um, to do a roll up of all of the opportunities for a particular parent company. So in this case, you can see the, the, uh, all of the opportunities and which companies they belong to. And this is the, in this case, it's the parent, but in this case, it's the child. So think of it as just trying to get visibility of, of the entire uh, customer organization in one view in terms of the sales pipeline. While we're here, not it's a type of data. I'm just going to mention it. One of the useful things is tracking things like emails. It's a type of data. So there's another data point. Uh, you can see all the emails associated uh, with contacts and companies that way. I'm in a company record right now. And I wanted to point out, if you're not familiar with this, how that works. I'm going to go here into my inbox, and I'm just going to say, let's say I wanted all emails from this person to be linked to either a, a contact company or opportunity record. So you're going to see when you're highlighted on an, uh, on an email, it's a type of data, which is why we're talking about it today. I can associate that email with um, contacts, companies, or opportunities. Now, I put my little link as a shortcut in my quick access toolbar. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch one of my videos on Outlook. But anyway, we just have a little shortcut that lets you choose how you want to deal with these emails from this person. So this brings up a dialogue that says, do I want to link it to an opportunity? If so, do I want to automatically link emails from that person to an opportunity or just a one-time link or even by a unique identifier, like a project name or something like that? So that ties the data, the pieces of data together. In one case, it's the email and it might have the, a project name in it uh, and, the, and the project itself, the opportunity would have, you know, the description, the description line, that project name perhaps. So you can do it that way, but you can also choose to link emails to contacts, companies, or both the contacts and the company. So that's a useful function. Uh, not all versions of profit, depends on what you're on, support that out of the box. You may have to talk to your account manager to get more on that. But I wanted to bring it up because it's a key part of the database. It's not just contact company and so forth. It's the activities in them. Uh, including things like notes, by the way, which you're probably familiar with the whole idea of, you know, logging in uh, interactions through the notes function. And if you're not familiar with it, you can custom, you can create customized note entries. Like I did a quote follow up, you know, I sent a quote. I we had an on-site visit. I took some notes, and this this is part of your database too, which is automatic. Which is the anytime you put a note in, it's time and date stamped as the user that put the note in, and whatever they flagged it in terms of activity type. So. The tracking of activities is also part of the database. So look at it that way. I mentioned earlier files. Now Profit uh, just, it's real simple because when you click add a file, it just brings up Windows File Explorer. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk briefly about different ways data is stored for, for files. One of them, if you're on 365 and, and use SharePoint, then you can actually have them synchronized with your, uh, with your local documents here. So if, if I wanted to put a uh, um, PowerPoint under that, that customer, you can see that it created the hyperlink for it. Now, uh, if you're on 365, you may also want to um, use um, OneDrive, which gives you a local copy of it, which is pretty nice. Um, 
I, I prefer that. So anyway, you can link any kind of documents to this as, that you wish. Um, I'm not going to get into sales automation today, but what I am going to do is talk a little bit about the um, opportunity um, data now. So let's talk about opportunity data. So in Opportunity Manager, you'll see all of the opportunities in different lists here. Um, you can also see the opportunities for any given customer or contact in, in, the, in the contact manager or company manager. Well, let's just go in here for a moment and start talking about what's important in, a, um, in an opportunity. So first of all, it is a customizable form. Um, uh, we're gonna get to duplicates in a moment. I have a question about that. And I'll show you that in just a moment, Jim. Uh, but in this case, uh, I'm in a, an opportunity. It's, it's an opportunity for the model Flux 10. Uh, apparently it's a flux capacitor for a time machine, it looks like. But th what, that's whatever description you give it. In fact, some people call this a project. That's a customizable feature. They call it a lead, a prospect. The default term is opportunity. But the description, by the way, that's where that unique identifier might reside. Like if I was linking all emails that had the term flux uh, model flux 10 and it, then those emails would be tracked automatically to this. The status are all customizable and you know it's going to default as an active opportunity and then you're going to move it to different sta statuses. Status is the outcome. Don't confuse it with stage. One lost on hold active. The stage though really is valuable because it lets you uh, keep track of where things are at and I'm, I'm sure most of you are, have used this to some degree. But I do want to point out that it's not just limited to the sales stages. You can also put post-sale stages in there for things that happen after the uh, opportunity is closed and won, let's just say. But all of this data, so the, in my mind, there's basically four pieces of information that are really important uh, to managing your sales pipeline. And even though you might have 20, 30 pieces of information in here, you don't need them all to, to effectively manage your sales pipeline. So um those those things are in my mind what stage you're in the probability the estimated close date and the potential revenue with those things you can generate a a, a forecast and um that's subject for another another um part of this this um uh webinar today it's more what you can do out of it and one of them would be to generate a forecast what do i got in my pipeline that i think might close this month this quarter next quarter or what have you so we're going to show you that here in a bit. But those four pieces of information are very valuable. Not, however, to um, uh, de-emphasize some key information like where did the, what type of lead is this? Where did it come from? Is it a website lead? Is it a referral? Is it cold call? You know, what type of lead is it? Maybe even what type of sale it is. We have various types of sales that we do here. Expansion, new sales, renewal, and so on. If it's a, if it's a, web, a website lead, where did that originate? And you, you can have in your, your webmaster will know how to do this, but when the leads come in, it can actually flag you know, where it came from. And that becomes useful because you can start interpreting this data to figure out what's working and do more of it. Or if something isn't working and you're invest in, investing money in you know, some sort of lead vendor or something like that, then you can decide not to do it based on the data you get out of the system. But don't overcomplicate it. Think of an opportunity as just having you know four or five pieces of information you really must have to be useful. In an opportunity, you can also make certain fields required, although don't get carried away with that because if you do it too much, it's a little bit counter to, um, to user adoption, which of course is very important. But let's just say now that you've got some opportunities going on, what are we going to do with them? Well, the same concepts apply that I showed you earlier in that you can create different lists. And like I showed you before, in this case, it, it's lists of opportunities. You can group by just dragging it up one of these columns up to the, the gray bar there. And you can see now they're grouped by sales stage. So if I just want to now go in and I want to look at all of the deals that are in stage four, easy to do. If I want to look at all the deal, deals that are in stage two, to, I can see it. So that's the grouping again, but you can also do it for opportunities. So that's a useful function, but sorting and filtering the data itself is one of the most important things. You can, you can always go into the edit view and change the settings, like even the sort settings, but you can also just 
click on the columns. But before I get into that, I also wanted to point out, this is a relatively new feature, that you can choose how many records you want to display. Now down here in the lower left, you'll see there's a little drop down when I'm in a particular folder view, in this case, opportunities. I could display 100, 200, 500, 1,000, or all. The reason we, we enhanced the, and added this feature is that Profit is unique in that it lets you view any size of list that you want. Most CRMs, and in fact, very similar to how Google works, you get 25 results per page. You have to page, 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 page. And there's no option to do everything, take an action on a list longer than, say, 25 25 records, like sending an email or something. Well, that's kind of goofy. So we let you choose. Now, the downside of that is a very big list, like a thousand records or more, uh, can take a little bit longer uh, load time. So just keep that in mind. But in any event, um, I have 50 records here and I want to sort them. An easy thing to do is you can just click on the column that you want to sort by, and it's just kind of like an Excel column. If you click it again, it sorts it descending so that, that was a numeric field so now this is all of my deals that i'm looking at from top to bottom what question does it answer what what is the interpretation here well maybe i want to just look at my top 10 deals or whatever and i want to get a quick view of what they are well one thing profit summarizes them down here for me okay notice again if i'm just selecting and as i do that you'll see it's adding to that summary at the bottom seven eight nine ten so i'm highlighted 10 records see it there the total value of my top 10 in the pipeline is five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars and change the average deal size fifty two thousand without even running a report which we're going to get to here momentarily uh we're going to wrap up with some of the reports and dashboards um so well that's useful i don't have to run a report but while we're talking about that and I'm in a list like that, you can always just click the Excel button. In this case, I only want to export selected rows because those are the ones I highlighted. I'm just showing you this a little precursor to our reporting part of the, the, the webinar. And it simply creates an Excel report of that exact data that you just chose. Pretty awesome because people know Excel. You can slice, dice, do you know pivot tables, charts, and graphs in Excel all day long. And we make it really easy to do. I, I will point out though that the, um, the ability to export to Excel is a permission-based function that your profit administrator has to uh, give you. So uh, export to Excel while I was just there. Um, move columns around, drag and drop, add new columns to it. You know, you can right click, choose columns, the same sort of thing that we did before. And it just basically lets you create unique views. You can save them and give them different lists like you know, closing this month is a useful one. You know, uh, account, you know, opportunities in Texas, in this case, you know, my Hollywood opportunities. And so you can create as many lists like that as you wish. Um, if you want to send out emails from here, you can. Not all CRMs let you do this. But I can select some or all of these opportunities in my pipeline and send everyone an email blast, just like we did from the account side. And this just simply lets you create a, a personalized email to everyone on that list. All right, so um, one, of the, one of the questions was um, having to do with, let's see, the question was deduping. So let's switch it back. Let's just kind of switch gears and, and talk about um, duplicate prevention and deduping. Um, before I even get into the detail here, Avidian does offer, our company does offer deduping of the profit database if for whatever reason you're, you're knee deep into this or years into it. And, you know, you have a lot of duplicates and hadn't been too um, too diligent about it. Um, we offer a deduping service, so uh, reach out to your account manager or um, or even me. I'm always happy to, to chat with anyone uh, after the webinar if you're interested in our deduping service. But uh, we're just going to go in and <clears throat> I'm going to just see if I have any dupes right now. I usually don't have a lot of them, but I'm going to look up. I'm going to also use this as an example. To, do, to bypass the filter view here. Uh, and I just wanna go into advanced search here. Okay, so what this is gonna do is show me all of the contacts that, that, oh, we do, nice, we have a dupe. Okay, so here's a duplicate in here, of Anthony Hopkins. And one of them has some categories set, one of them has a job title, one of them doesn't. Uh, I'm gonna look at them, but the, 
Profit has a, uh, the ability to dedupe automatically, but there is one last thing uh, or one kind of overriding thing is that if you're looking at contacts, trying to make sense of which one's the best contact, well, you just open it and save it. I usually put a note in it just to make sure I, I, I know it has worked right. But now I can just select the duplicates that, that are in the database. And if you see them there, you can, you, can you can obviously tell that's a dupe. And I'm just gonna select them both and right click and say merge contacts. So what this is gonna do, first it's gonna show you what it's gonna do. By the way, notes are always appended. Nothing gets overwritten in notes. So don't worry about that. But blank fields are automatically um, populated with um, populated fields. Uh, and the reason we did that last save and close was if there's data in both contacts, then it's gonna, the most recently saved one will override. I click merge. Um, and this is a way to, to dedupe. Now I could have had uh, five of those contacts in there and I could dedupe them all in one shot. So hopefully that answered uh, your question about how to dedupe. Now it turns out you can also dedupe records in, uh, in the company manager. Uh, same way, uh, Profit does not allow exact duplicates, but let's just say um, you had two companies. One was spelled slightly different than the other, like right here. See how that one says Bat Woman Fashion Products, and it has a space in it, and this one doesn't. This might be the old LLC Corp uh, thing, you know, sort of scenario. You do the same sort of thing, and you want to you know, go in and look at them, you can, and then it works the same way uh, in that the last one saved will override the other. So let's dedupe a company here while we're at it. Select the companies that you want to merge together, right click, merge companies, and then we'll have the companies merged. In this case, it's also notice picking up categories. So it's going to merge categories as well. And it's going to have that same business logic and uh, we Boom, just successfully deduped a company. I love it when a plan comes together. So that's deduping. Uh, while we're at it, I'm going to also talk a little bit about, um, well, duplicate prevention. So Profit has an import utility, and that has a, a duplicate prevention function. But also, if you're just creating a contact manually, like so, new contact. And if I wanted to say, uh, I'm going to create a contact here. This is the contact builder, but it's also your duplicate checker. So um, you can just start creating the contact. And in this case, uh, it's checking. I got a lot of Tonys in the database, so there's hundreds of them. But if I start typing in the last name, you can see how it's going to detect if anyone has that exact match for first and last name. In this case, there is a match. So this prevents you from creating duplicates. In this case, I would simply open the contact. I wouldn't create a new one. If, if you go to, uh, you can kind of probably tell my age group by some of the demo contacts I have here. <laughs> my son was a big skateboarder. He's like 40 now though. Gave it up. Okay. Well, anyway, the whole point here is you can you can uh, use Profit uh, very confidently to create contacts, and it'll help prevent your duplicates. So that's a pretty awesome thing. We are now going to uh, segue into um, for the wrap up here. We're going to segue into reporting. I mentioned that you can always export to Excel, and when you click that green button, you can choose all or selected rows. So that's always an easy way to create a report. Super easy, click, click, you got yourself a nice report. Profit also has a report um, function. It's kind of like the traditional report writer. And in, in here is where you can do things like, maybe you wanna look at your pipeline and do some forecasting. There's different uh, things in here, but there is a very useful one uh, that is basically called um, forecast adjusted for probability. Put in your date range, choose who you want to forecast on, one or more people, uh, click view or preview. Preview just shows you the first two pages. And this is a great way to see what, you know, what you're going to do with that opportunity data because you want to have a report that shows you the health of your pipeline, for example. Now, in this case, you can see that it shows all of the all of the report, all of the, um, you know, the opportunities that you have, they're all in proposal stage, how many you expect to close, what it would be adjusted for probability. And while I'm in here, I'll show you that with the designer tool, not to get too deep into this, but this is where you can, you know, do things like change colors, um, put, you know, move logos around, or, you know, move uh, fonts around and stuff like that. So I have logos in a folder here. 
And I would just pick a whatever one I want. I'll just say that one. That's a little too big for that, but that's how you would add a logo to a report. You can also create your own reports, and this just gives you the, the report builder. Choose the report category. Uh, if you have multiple departments, you choose the department. Otherwise, there'd just be one. You give it a name. You choose the columns you want, and then later you can format it. So you can build your own reports uh, on most any of the data here. There's also a couple of different um, analytics options which create dashboards. There's a little button here that brings up a, a simple uh, dashboard that shows you the three out-of-box dashboards and some it's nice, uh, although I'm going to show you what I prefer is the desktop version of this. Um, essentially, what this is doing is it's querying the Profit Serum database uh, through the cloud, and it's creating a, um, a, a report of types. Uh, in this case, it's called a uh, dashboard. I haven't loaded this for a while, so that'll take a, just a second here. But what that's doing, in this case, it's going to show me three things. It's going to show me the opportunities. Uh, this, in other words, the sales pipeline. It's going to show me the um, activities. So it'll show you a sales pipeline and things like your funnel, uh, upper, you know, revenue by user, by date, by estimated close date. We talked about conversion rates briefly, uh, conversion rates by sales rep and things like that. There's also an activity dashboard that comes with profit right out of the box. It does have to be enabled, uh, but that's available with all um, of all versions in what we call the sales CRM or the enterprise. So you can then use this to filter and slice and dice and sort and filter the data. So there's an activity dashboard. And you know, think about it this way. Maybe it's important in your business that people are generating, like salespeople are actually doing sales activities. Novel concept. Um, but I find it interesting that not everyone gets that. Uh, so this just lets you kind of benchmark your activities, like how many um, activities by user or by time um, or by activity type. And then there's also a dashboard that comes with profit that is a um, dashboard that'll show you kind of entity creation. We talked about entities earlier. How many contacts were created? How many companies? How many opportunities? Who's creating them? Who's creating what mix of those? And Profit has some kind of AI fuzzy logic that extracts um, and, and, and uh, classifies contacts by job function. Um, not always the job title, but you can see VP, manager, owner, C-level, director, that kind of thing. And then on the right, there's a little uh, mapping function that shows you contacts created um, by geography. And you can drill up and down to show by city or just region and that kind of thing. So these are the three dashboards that come with Profit, and it's really all intended to help you uh, answer those key questions we started off with, right? And, and at the end of the day, here's what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, it's the what and the so what. The what is the data, but, but so what? What do you do with it? What makes some reps more productive than others? What lead sources are producing the most or the least revenue? And, you know, all data is just, not as useful unless you watch the trends. That's why I'm a big believer in watching trends and interpreting trends. Is your sales pipeline improving? Are you creating more opportunities this quarter than you were last quarter or last year? Are you creating more or fewer contacts? Um, where geographically is your new business coming from? All of these things are answering the so what of it all. And a little business tip for you today is find out what's not working and cut back on that stuff. Find out what is working and do more of it. Hopefully, uh, that will help you um, get more value out of your CRM. And uh, it's time to wrap up here. So I'm just going to keep this uh, posted here for another minute or so. Feel free to contact me or your, your account manager and let us know how we can help. We'd be del delighted to, uh, to help you with your uh, CRM journey. Thank you all and have a good rest of the day.